it's M++. Greetings, 565 here. For those not in the know, M++ is an indie platformer game developed by MetaNet Software that marks the third and final iteration of the N series. This game has intimidating new enemies, masterfully designed levels, gorgeous color palettes, perfectly themed music, a revamped level editor, among many, many other features that make this game the ultimate accumulation of over two decades of work. So what do I mean by perfect game? I'm not disregarding masterpieces such as Minecraft or Terraria or Halo or any other game that appears in your mind when I say perfect game. Perhaps perfected would be a better word because I don't mean the best game ever. I mean a game in the purest sense of the word. There's no frills, there's no gimmicks. It's a purest dream. There's a goal to complete that takes skill to complete. And I believe M++ does this in the purest way possible. The goal in M++ is concrete and simple. Beat the level. Not that other games have a vague goal, but that is the only goal in M++. The game presents you with a single challenge a thousand times over with no possible alternatives or sub goals. Let's take a look at another modern platformer as an example, Super Mario Odyssey. Your goal in each world is to collect all the moons, but how you go about that, the order in which you do it, the secrets you discover and so on and so forth can vary wildly from player to player. M++ does not allow the player to develop smaller goals that build up to the final goal of beating the level. Not in the sense that M++ is restrictive to the player, but that the game is so refined that this simplicity emerges from the game's very nature. The core gameplay loop of attempting to beat a level until you do so is so simple and so pure that it cannot be simplified any further. It harkens back to the classic arcade games where the lack of frills was due to the context the game was made in rather than the a deliberate choice made by the developers, as is the case in M++. Anyone who's played M++ is probably screaming at the screen right now about the various goals the game does offer, the all gold challenges, the hardcore challenges, the very existence of a list of levels that just entices you to try to complete them all. These are in fact goals that the game presents to the player that can be completed in any order or just ignored entirely. But all of these goals are built on the foundational goal of beating a level. If you cannot beat a level, the bigger goals cannot be completed and there is no alternative. Of course you can't complete Super Mario Odyssey if you can't beat the levels, but there's a multitude of ways to beat the levels because there's a multiple ways to collect the moons. Sure, you could skip to a different set of levels in M++, but switching levels will not substitute the level you skipped from. Beating a level is a fundamental and unavoidable goal. Right now, it probably sounds like I really hate having choices or complexity in games. I don't. I really love it, actually, considering my most played genre of game is FPS games, where depending on the game, the goal can be as complex and abstract as just win the round. Complexity is not bad, but the core gameplay loop of attempting to beat a level is as simple as possible, which is part of why I consider M++ the perfect game. Okay, so the gameplay loop is simple. So what? What if the levels suck to play? The levels in M++ are, in my opinion, fortunately very well designed. I'm going to split levels into two elements the geometry and the enemies, as they are equally integral to each other. Starting with the enemies, every enemy in M++ is unique. Each one has its own behavior, and they all try to kill you. If the enemy is passive, as in it will kill you but does not seek you out, predicting where they'll be is pretty easy, and if they do seek you out, enemies telegraph what they're about to do with motion or sound, and the resulting attack is very straightforward. The enemies in this game are powerful, purposeful, and simple. But don't be mistaken, the combination of different enemies can make levels insanely difficult, pushing the skill floor of a level right up to the skill ceiling of the player. A single enemy may not do much on its own, but a handful of the right enemies in the right spots can do serious damage, especially if the enemy is placed with the geometry around it in mind. And when I say geometry, I'm referring to the walls, the floors, the one-way platforms, and so on. The layout of the map. There are a select number of tiles to pick from to build a level, and every level I've played has had strikingly simple geometry while still being very exploitable. This simplicity offers and encourages free movement throughout the game, being able to wall jump, redirect movement off of ramps, break falls by landing at the right angle are all mechanics that interact with the pre-existing plane geometry. The same slope that saves you from a fall can crush your player if landed on wrong. In combination with one another, the geometry of the level 
and the right enemies can create maddeningly difficult pit masterpieces that take hundreds of attempts to crack and thousands more to beat the level consistently. True difficulty, not rage bait type difficulty designed to be obtuse and inconsistent, but pure difficulty where the mechanics are simple and consistent and your skill is the only thing holding you back from beating a level, that kind of difficulty arises from good level design. The simplicity of the building blocks of an M++ level means the designer was forced to make good levels without relying on a gimmicky mechanic or an enemy as a crutch. The difficulty lies in the player skill and the player skill alone because of the simplicity of the game. M++ levels have been perfected, they are pure, and they make the game what it is. Speaking of skill, it seems like there wouldn't be a huge skill ceiling considering the inputs are left, right, and jump. But as you've probably already guessed, the simplicity of the controls is what lends to making them great. The inputs are not variable, even on controller. There's only full left or full right, but in exchange, there's effectively no delay in input. Even mid-air control still feels snappy and responsive. It's possible to wall jump, redirect the speed from ramp to a jump, and do other funky things with the three buttons provided by the game. The hitbox of the player is also deceptively small and conforms with the player's animations, as far as I can tell. These mechanics reward timing and coordination alone, with an impossibly high skill ceiling and infinite return. For anyone who's played Geometry Dash long enough to see bits of the community has seen how ridiculously skilled some players of the community can get with timings. M++ is similar, but it rips away the importance of memorizing inputs and introduces a second dimension to deal with. Not to say one's better or one's worse, but both games demonstrate impossibly high, sometimes inhuman, skill ceilings because of simple inputs. The simplicity of the inputs of M++ means the skill, again, resides only in the player. Let me phrase it this way. There is no wall jump button. The level of coordination, the minute timings, the precise control is directly correlated to the player and the player alone. There is no learning curve for the inputs. There is no rote memorization. The simplicity and purity of the controls provides an unfettered platform for mastery to flourish. The visuals are nothing groundbreaking, but I felt it's important to mention that the visuals reflect the simplicity of the game, engaging but without the need for complexity. Not to say complexity is bad, but complexity is just that. Complexity. M++ simplicity in defining goals is what makes it such a pure implementation of a platformer. M++ does what it does to be considered a platformer and absolutely nothing more. And there's a beauty in that. It takes restraint to develop a game with simple features and real skills to make the few features so masterfully implemented that they leave nothing more to be desired. As I said at the beginning of the video, M++ is a purest dream of a video game. In a paradoxical fashion, its utter purity and simplicity creates an easily digestible experience, yet somehow offers hundreds of hours of fresh gameplay. Not to mention the thousands of hours of sheer replayability, all for $10. If you don't own this game and have any amount of fun with platformers, go get M++. Thanks for watching. Subscribe, leave a like if you enjoyed. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Leave a dislike if you didn't like it because you're still engaging with my video. And yeah, have a great day.